How's it going YouTubers, Cornwall here. Thank you for joining me for another video today and today we've got a very quick look at a setup guide for F1 2018. Uh, really enjoying this game so far. Uh, it's got really good features and different things, but that'll be another another video for another time. Um, so we're just going to go into the, the settings and show you um, the settings and a few other little bits that that I hope might help you when you get around to playing this game. So um, this is on the Xbox, they also work on the PS4, but I have got another video coming out for the PS4 and reasons will be explained in that one uh, because I've got a little something extra for you in that one. Uh, so let's get straight to it. Y to game options. Unfortunately, there's a lot of menus to get to where we need to get to. So you've got settings, controls, vibration and feedback. MFD, we're not that bothered about, so we're going to go straight into the control settings. Uh, I've got the Xbox One controller still plugged in, um, but if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, you've noticed all these different wheels that it does support straight off the bat, which is great, um, and obviously they'll be different for, for the different consoles, but when you've tweaked it, you get a custom scheme. So we're going to go into that one, so this is my, my tweak, and you can rename it if you want to. Um, first off, you've got the control scheme, which is all the different buttons that you can remap. I believe, because I've got clutch and manual clutch, so the, uh, the the warning sign means that you've got it bound to something else. And I think, like here, I've got the DRS and pit limiter on the same one. Because it's something that's triggered, I think, I don't know, I need to check this, um, that if you're in the pit limiter and you want to press it, you just press Y and it will do it because the DRS won't be active. We'll see. Need to give that one a go. Um, but anyway, you can change all that. And if you've got a button box, which is something I'm thinking of getting, uh, you can change all these different ones in the MFD shortcuts and whatnot. Under collaboration, I've just whacked all these down to zero, which I think is pretty much what it is anyway. You can press uh, the pedals in. If you can press it. There we go. And you could just trial it for yourself. Make the tweaks if you want to. Change the steering and whatnot. Um, but I've just left that as it, as it is, and it seems to work well. Um, so yeah, all at zero for that one. Uh, vibration and feedback. So this is where I have started to make a few tweaks, but not an awful lot, if I'm honest. The settings are pretty decent straight out the bat. It's just your personal preferences. It's not like some games where you go in and you like Project Cars and it wants to rip the wheel out your hands and different things. It's pretty slick to start off with. Um, 100% left that as it is. Sounds a bit crazy, but it's not going to rip it out of your hands, like I've said. On track effects, I've just tweaked this down a little bit. Um, I've tweaked it down to 8 from 10. Might tweak it down a little bit more because when you're at full throttle, 8th gear, belting it down a straight, and sometimes you get a little bit of feedback, a little bit of rumble, um, which is nice, but it can sometimes be a little bit off-putting. So I've just dialed it down just a touch. I've actually dialed up the rumble strips a bit. Um, and, it, and it seems to work well. So I've got that at 40. I think it starts off at 30 or 20. Uh, just just nice. I like a little bit of, bit of a vibration to let me know I'm on those rumble strips. And unless I'm on a corner exit, I need to get off them pretty sharpish. Off track effects. I've left that at 20. Um, try not to go off the track too much, to be honest. But um, when you do, I don't want it to be ripping it out of my hands and different things. I want to be able to get on the track as quick as I can and control that. So that seems to work quite well. Uh, and the wheel dampener, um, again, I've upped that a little bit because I, I think it starts off at five. Um, I want to feel the forces of the of the tyres a little bit um, and just kind of fight the wheel just a touch, but not a lot. Um, I personally like just a little kind of effort to put into steering when I'm on a, a racing sim, as you guys know. Um, so you could always up that a little bit and turn down the overall forces and different things if you want to, or just to tweak this down a little bit. Like I said, I think it starts off at 5. I've upped it to 10. Seems to work okay for me. Uh, and the understeer and hand seems to work pretty well. So when you're going around a corner, if you're turning too much uh, and you get to the bounds of the, the grip, uh, this is mainly for when your tyres start to go off the cliff, <coughs> then it will obviously the wheel I think will go a little bit limp and start to go just a touch. Um, so it's quite nice. It's quite a nice feeling um, that you know, yeah, okay, I'm I'm pushing the boundaries of my tyres right now. Uh, and then you've got the, the maximum wheel rotation 360. That seems to work pretty well. I know I've got a 900 degree wheel. However, um, I, I don't want to be shuffling the wheel in my hands, crossing my arms and get myself all in a pretzel. Uh, so 360 seems to work pretty well, even in the hairpins and things. Um, and you do start to cross over a little bit for those tight uh, corners, but there's not ma that many of them and they are pretty low speed in comparison. So that seems to work pretty well again. MFD shortcuts, not done anything with that. Again, not enough buttons in the day uh, to use them. So it's where a key box will come in uh, or a button box. So you can tweak all those if you want to. Um, but they are there if you want to add those bits. 
So just going to back out here, um, and I'm just going to show you something on screen now, uh, which is the uh, the halo. So the halo uh, obviously is quite an important thing for this season of F1, and I like it, and I think it's good. It's a safety feature and different things that make the cars a little ugly, but you know, let's let's keep the drivers alive a little bit longer. I know we're doing better than what we have done in previous years, um, but it's there. However, when you're racing on one of these games, it's a bit of a pain in the ass. As you can see, you've got the uh, the the racing line on there, or it's actually the braking line. Um, I've actually stopped on track in the middle of a braking line, so that's why it's green. So it's a little bit easier for you guys to see. And there's not an awful lot of difference, but there is. When you're going down a straight at 100, 200 miles an hour, whatever these cars get up to on certain corners, it's pretty hard to see it from a distance. Um, and it's not until you're on top of it and then you lock up your brakes that you'll see it. So there is a way to turn off the halo, as you can see, between the two pictures. So let's get back to the settings and I'll show you just there. Um, so from here, we're just going to go down to camera options, believe it or not. Um, and right at the bottom, you've got the halo column on and off, as well as a few different things, field of view, angle, different things like that. So if you do like to race in cockpit like me, and you're struggling a little bit to find those braking points, you can turn it on and off if you want to. Uh, and it's just there. Uh, and it's literally just as simple as that, turning it on and off. And that's it, guys. That's all I've got for you in this video. I'm trying to keep it short, sweet and simple. Um, and try not to wrap it on too much. Um, so if you've liked this video, don't forget to throw it a like, give it a share, different things like that. It helps the channel grow and I very much appreciate it. And until next time, I shall see you all on the next video, uh, which will hopefully be the PS4 one with that little extra treat, treat, tweet or whatever, treat to show you all uh, with something I've done there. So uh, until next time, guys, I'll see you all on the next video.